I'm inhibiting rotational movement. So that is an example. I mean, that is what the actual meaning of what rotational movement. Now, you can see from the diagram the, the young man trying to what move your what move the particular rotatory object along its axis. That is another good example for rotational movement. Now, that young man, let's do the analysis now. For a man to actually move a ball, I mean push a particular rotatory object, this is the object, it has a handle. Now, this is the base that is actually rotating. For me to move this thing round, for me to move the handle, and for me to allow this, this particular body to rotate, I will apply what we call force. So when they apply this force towards this direction, this body will what? rotate. So it means that this body is exhibiting rotate, rotational motion. So that's an, that is what the actual meaning of rotational motion. Now let's go to the next type of motion. We have what we call circular motion. Circular motion. Now there is difference between circular and rotational. They are almost the same, but they are different. You say this is the movement of an object in the circular part. Now for rotational, excuse me, for rotational. The direction of that particular body is constant. Do you understand? It's constant, that is, it's fixed. But for circular, for circular, the direction is not constant. It can start from here, and it will, it will, it will, it will leave that particular axis now, it will come here, or it will go this way. So this particular motion is circular, but not rotational. Do you understand? So, a body can move in a cyclic direction, while a body can move in a rotatory direction. If you move in a rotatory direction, it means that there is a constant what, radius in between what, the middle of the particular what, axis, point zero, and the circumference by, at which the object is what, maintained. But if it's circular, there is increment in what, radius. You can see this is the radius 1, and this is radius 2. So, the, for circular, there is no constant radius. While for what, rotational, there is a constant radius. Another one is the centripetal, centripetal, uh, okay, under your circular motion, there are some factors you need to consider. We have what we call centripetal force, but don't let us go into that yet. I just decided to add them more because we will definitely need it in future. Another one is your periodic motion, periodic motion. Periodic motion is a motion that repeats at its regular interval. Do you get that? I say your periodic motion, the type of motion in which the exhibition repeats itself at what regular interval. The very good example is your pendulum ball. If you attach your pendulum ball here, if this particular location is said to be the ceiling or the what the upper base where the pendulum ball is attached, if I decide to swing this ball towards this direction, it goes like this. Do you know it comes back? Let me use a broken line. It comes back towards this particular direction again, this same ball. Now, for it to be exhibiting this type of motion, throw and fold, throw and fold, trying to maintain that same position. That is what we call what? periodic. Meaning that what? It does not what? exhibit new direction. Do you understand? It's maintaining the what? The direction at which you what? You let it. So that is an example of your what? Of your periodic motion. So we said the balance wheel of a watch. That's an example. Now, the rotation of the head around its axis is also what an example of periodic motion. Now, let's go to the another one: the relative motion. We say this is the motion in, in, in relation to what a frame of what reference. What do we mean? Let me let me give you an analogy of a relative relative motion. When you have a body here, both are turning. Is body A? Is body B. Now, body A, body A's motion is what? Is anti-clockwise. Let's assume at the edge of the body, there's what we call uh, teeth. That's what we call teeth. Now, this one too has its own teeth. It is this teeth that is actually making this one to what? To move. So, if this one goes anti-clockwise, this one will go what? Clockwise. Do you understand? So, this particular Two types of motion. I mean, two body are exhibiting what we call relative motion, meaning that what one particular motion of the body is allowing what the movement of what the, the, the motion of the what second body when fully attached. 
Look at this. For example, a train moves past a station platform. People stand in front of the platform. We see those in the train speeding by. Meaning that people that stood, people that are static, eh, are what? Are seeing people that are moving by. Meaning that this particular star, this is these are the people moving by. Do you understand? These people are static. Why these people are moving? This is the train and this and these people, these are the people that are standing. So for both of them to be related, it means that one particular body is static and the other body is just moving. So what are we saying here is that two particular bodies will be considered. Either one particular static and one particular moving, or both bodies will be moving with respect to each other. He said, but when the people on the train look at each other and they don't seem to be moving at all. Do you understand? So those two particular analogies, either with this one, where first body allows the movement of the second body, or the second or the second scenario where a static body is allowing what? I mean is viewing the second body moving. So those two particular analogies eh, gave us a clear description of what a relative motion is. Two bodies being what? Analyzed in terms of motion with respect to each other. So that is under relative motion. So let's, without wasting our time, let's go to the activity. Activity one says, as if that would be the activity three, says uh, identify the types of motion present in the what? In a circle, in a bicycle, speed, and uh, in a bicycle spokelet arrangement. When you say bicycle spokelet arrangement, you look at it very well. When you say a spokelet of a bicycle, you will know. You understand when I draw it now. It's every every bicycle owner will, will know this easily. Now, this particular spoket is always here. Now, whereby when the pedal here is being rolled, it's being rolled. Now it moves this particular one. This particular spoket. Now this one will actually what bring about the movement of the back one. Now what type of, what type of motion would that be? That will definitely be what we we'll call relative. Motion. The motion, the body of this one, bringing about the what? rotation of this one. So we said the movement of a car and its jack when it's trying to what? change tire. Is an example for your relative motion. We also talked about the swinging stone tied to a rope. Movement of a mice being what? chased by you. You know, and the mice is chased by now. If the mice is not chasing you, you will not run now. So two motion. Actually taking place with respect to each other. If one did not what, move, the second one will not move. So that those type of what motion exhibition is what we call what, the relative motion. And there are so many some more activities involved. We said we have the traveling walking away at the airport. Now, without wasting our time, let's go into another interesting topic when we talk about the force. Force. We're looking at force as a topic now. What is force? Force is an agent that changes or that, that changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body. What do I mean? A body can be at rest. This is a, this is a, this is a body. It's not moving. It's at rest. Now, when you have a body that is moving, it is force that will actually what? Make this body to stop. Meaning that you can decide to kick a ball. I used to ask my student the other time, I said, when you kick a ball, a ball is supposed to be moving. If there is no external force attached or attacking that ball, that ball will not stop. It will continue moving. That will bring us back to what? The first law of motion. But when we get there, I will state it properly. The first law of motion states that a body will continue to be at a state of rest until when an external body is attached to it. Or, or a body will continue to be on it at a state of motion until when an external force is attached to you. What do we mean by that definition? Meaning that if you keep a ball pen or you keep your pen in a room that does not have anybody coming into the room, if you lock that room for 100 years, that pen will still be there. Meaning that that body will continue to be at a state of rest until an external body is attached to you. But your, in the case of your ball, your moving ball, you keep the ball and the ball continues to roll. If that ball will come to a state of rest. Why? Because is being attacked or is being uh, 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 faced with some what forces. It can be forces of the air, can be forces of what the particular surface at which the ball is rolling on. Those are the forces that will actually what bring the ball to a state of end. So meaning that if those forces do not exist, that ball will continue to roll. It will not come to an end. So 
Whether it is a force that attacks a ball that is moving on motion, or is a force that attacks a body that is on a state, those activities, I mean those scenarios, a force is involved. So those forces are what we are going to be looking at. So we say, once again, what is a force? We say, a force, a force is an agent that changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body. Force can change the direction and shape of an object. Now, before we proceed, let's look at types of force. There are two major types. You have what we call your contact force and your field force. Contact force or field force. Look at we have your contact force and your what? Field force. Now, what are the differences of these two? Number one, for contact force, contact forces are in touch with the body to which they are applied. That is, they come in contact with the body to which they are applied. Now, if you look at the diagram, we have a force can be a push or a pull. Do you understand? A force can be a pull or a push. A, a push. Now, when we now proceed, you realize that under the contact forces, it can be a push or a pull. It can be it can be tension. It can be as a reaction. Do you understand? It can be as a reaction of friction. When we say friction, you know. Friction has always been existing when the body, when when the body has inability, you understand? When the body has inability to slide smoothly on the surface, it means that friction is taking place. You understand? So this particular two, the surface of the ground and the body that is acting on that ground, they have what we call contact. That's why it's called contact force. You understand? They are having a contact, so that's why it's called contact force. So friction also exists in this type of form exhibition.